Rohan coming calling from Australia and wanted to ask us about the Old Testament. Is that right? Correct, yes. Cool. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, okay. The Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm struggling to write a book, and I'm going with Aaron Ra's issue about the Ten Commandments not being the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Now, the Ten Commandments, if we put Exodus aside, it's spelled out in uh, Deuteronomy 5, I believe. I've just found that the Deuteronomy was written first. Well, that's what I believe. I just want to fact check this with Doug. Deuteronomy? Uh, no, uh, uh, Exodus was written before Deuteronomy. Exodus was written before the Deuteronomy. I believe so, because Deuteronomy in the Hebrew is the second law, and it was written after Leviticus. And Leviticus, the well, actually, it might not be. It's kind of complicated because the the chronology given in Leviticus and in Exodus, I mean, that stuff came afterwards. Even though the narrative events come before, it's been a while since I've looked at biblical dating and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I got a bigger, broader type question for yeah. you, Rohan. Like, why are you writing a book about this? Oh, yeah, um, uh, well, after talking to Theus for so long, they pretty much get everything wrong. <laughs> so I just wanted to list all the things that most Christians believe that isn't quite true. Well, most Christians would believe, at least if they're the hardcore evangelical types, they would say that they were all written by Moses around the yeah. same time. Uh, yeah. And that's... Uh, and. I've got to point out in the book that Moses probably didn't exist. Yes. Probably not. Yeah. So, yeah, again, I wish I wish I was a little more up to speed. It's been quite a few weeks since I've, I've read about this, but they are in different spans of time, and it also depends on which um, what you mean by written because different sections of the books were probably written at different times depending on which um, hypothesis hypothesis you subscribe to. Again, we're talking about the, well, doc- the documentary hypothesis saying different authors, you know, contributed to ed- the editing and, um, you know, um, yeah, um, process of yeah, putting I, those books together. I, I understand. I'll change it mm-hmm. written to complete it. Um, I think it, from what I've found... The Deuteronomy was completed uh, 6th century B.C. and Exodus 5th century B.C. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, we just, we're just yeah, not credentialed right. to give <laughs> that kind of answer, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, Rohan, you should talk to uh, people who specialize in this field or read their books. <laughs> and my, my guess is what you're trying to do has already been done, maybe? Well, um... Yeah, I've 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 looked around. It's yeah, I I can't find any book that is doing what I'm doing, um, and I've I've reached out to Aaron Ra. He seems to be the one who's promoting the Ten Commandments, not being the Ten Commandments. But he hasn't hasn't got back to me, so I don't know who else to talk to. Mm. Well, there are biblical scholars in the field who are atheists. Um, yes. Most yes. of the ones I know are New Testament scholars um, yes. that I only have limited contact with, as in not really most of them, except Richard Carrier. Um, and Doug's well, actually talked to Richard Carrier, too. Um, that was on the tip of my tongue. Maybe I should reach uh, out to Richard. Probably. Um, his email address is on his site. He's He's pretty cool about talking to people um but yeah Yeah. sorry this is i we are atheists and and those issues do matter to me but for you know right now i i can't give you a good answer on that so (laughs) rohan Uh, Rohan, do you do you think rohan that um this will actually impact christians that they will change their mind if they see some errors in the old testament um I don't, I don't believe a book will change anyone's mind. 
Um, I think if a Christian were to read it, it may give them pause. They may have to ask their pastor some questions. Uh, but it's it's more along the lines of a handbook for um, not I see for debate. Mm. Like I'm um, I'm addressing everything a Christian brings up and the rebuttal to it. Yeah, yeah, because because most Christians so I talk to, doing, what I'm doing is is proving why they're wrong. Yes, sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, well, in a debate situation, I guess that's okay, but um, most Christians are not going to even lower their confidence based on, I think, the stuff you're talking about. Because uh, I've, I've talked to Christians who, you know, you can, you can talk to, about uh, Trinitarians who believe that, that the Jesus they believe in commanded the killing of women and children except for the virgins, and it doesn't, yes. it's like, it's like water... Yeah, it's like water off a duck's back. It's like, no, I, this God gives me morality. He's the basis of my, of my morality and logic. He gives me meaning and purpose, and I, I want to live forever in heaven. Amen. And so when you have all these webs of belief being supported, it, it's like these things are, are not going to impact them. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, I hope yeah. I'm not um, making you depressed. <laughs> No, 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 I, I, I understand. I understand the value of street epistemology. I'm part of the community. I know that. But um, yeah, I, I just thought it would be a good time to release that type of, of, of book of interest for people atheists coming out. Um, yeah, it may be. Of, it, it should be enough to give any Christian pause. Does that make sense? Yeah, and and let me give my um. What's the Supreme Court thing where you write an opinion that disagrees, kind of, but like not really dissent. Here's my dissent, a little bit. I think Doug is right in the sense that if your goal is to convince people, there are ways you can do that. Where it, it depends on the claim that they're making. Obviously, like um, if they make the claim that the Old Testament is perfect and has. No flaws, or that the Ten Commandments are always the same. You know that might be a bit more convincing, but I I still agree with the mission of trying to categorize all the information by which we can to make sure that people know that these books aren't right or what people say that they are. Um, I would just be careful with what you're looking at. You know, like if you're looking at somewhere like I like to go on Rational Wiki a lot. I think that's a really fun website to look at. But what I find with some of these atheist sites sometimes is that they'll they're not as charitable as they could be and, or they don't give the full picture. Um, so I would just say be careful in, in looking at what you're doing. But I'm, I'm going to say, you know, if you're going to do it, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. So, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Rohan, um, Rohan yeah. if you have a pen, write this down. Um, my friend Cam Spires, uh, he's a New Zealander, so he's just across the, the little uh, waterway. He, across the beach. <laughs> <laughs> across the ditch. He says you should read the book, um, The New Interpreter's Bible Old Testament Survey. The New Interpreter's? The New Interpreter's Bible Old Testament Survey. And that might help you. But um, I would caution you, though, that uh, like, do, uh, do you have a PhD or a master's in Old Testament history? No, no I don't, no. Yeah, I if if I were you, I I would refrain from writing a book that you're not an expert in. Right. That's my opinion. Okay. Especially especially on this type of stuff. Like if you're writing a, an opinion book, like that's different. But if yeah. you're if you're writing uh like a, a very deep historical analysis, um uh, number one, d d I'm sure it's out there already, and and check out that book I just I told you about. And um, yes, definitely will do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or interview the people who really know what they're talking about. Yes. Yeah, start your own them. YouTube channel and and interview them. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean that's important, just as important as well. You know, you don't have to. You can be, still be a layman and still get the facts and collect them. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, or at least what we consider to be facts, what we know as facts. Anyway, uh, but thanks for calling, Rohan. That was really interesting, kind of a different kind of question. I hope your research 
uh, gives you the answers you're looking for. Well, thank you for devastating me in the nicest possible way. <laughs> hey, we're atheists. That's what we do. You know? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> speaking right. the truth in love. That's right. Uh, speaking in tongues of truth. Um, See you, Rohan. Anyway, take care. That was interesting. Um, was, that, was I too blunt? No, I, I'm glad you got to say what you got to say. Um, I like to, I think people should be able to create as much atheist content as possible. But um, I also think that we need to be as accurate as we can be and also realize the limitations of our credentials and, you know, what we can actually put out there and what people are going to listen to.